everybody. Welcome to the Comic Book Writer. This is B. Claymore. And today I want to talk a little bit about script formatting. Uh, this is something that aspiring writers or people who are just starting out ask a lot of questions about. I think people tend to make it a little more difficult than it needs to be. Um, so I'm going to talk about the way I format scripts. And also I'm going to give a couple examples of what, what my scripts, uh, what they go through after the editorial process. Uh, so what I've done here is I've got Google Drive open. Um, more and more I use Google, Google Drive as a place to stash um, concepts, uh, new ideas, uh, half-written scripts, and actually as I write scripts in Word I will then upload them to Google Drive just so that I have them in one place. I can switch back and forth from one system to another. I can share them with collaborators. Um, I can invite collaborators to add their own comments or editorial, as you will. So let me start off by saying, I think one of the reasons that people get a little confused about formatting is that they may have may have heard a little bit about or, or may have experience with screenwriting, whether it's television or film, or even writing novels. In those disciplines, there tends to be a specific format people want to use, um, and, and, and actually with, with screenwriting, a specific software uh, in terms of Final Draft. Final Draft is a program that I will use if I am doing something for people from Hollywood or uh, spec screenplays or television pilots or what have you. But I don't personally find Final Draft to be all that intuitive when I'm writing comic scripts because a lot of my scripting, a lot of the planning is done as, as I go. So I'll, I'll, sometimes I'll just throw a line of dialogue or some, some, some action or just a thought about what might happen later in the script. Uh, into the program as I'm writing. So Word allows me to do that, and then as I continue to script, it just bumps that information down so that sometimes when I'm done with the script, I'll have to clear out a whole page of just random notes that I've thrown at the bottom. Um, but but I, I use Word, and, and I use a template that's very, very basic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a script that I'm actually currently working on here. Um, this will be a spoiler alert for anybody that... Um, that is interested in this book. So this is a book that, that won't be out for maybe another year that artist Shane White and I are working on. And this is basically, so this is the second chapter of this book. And this demonstrates pretty clearly how simple the process or simple the format that I use is when it comes to scripting. Um, you know, basically the basic information up top, Dead Man's Curve number two. Now, now I'm writing this. There is there is an editor involved in this, but he but he sort of comes in after the fact. So I'm really writing this for me and Shane, the artist, uh, the two of us. So my main goal is to communicate to Shane what um, give him guidance in terms of how, what choices he wants to make when it comes to drawing the page. So there's now my, you know, Dead Man's Curve pipeline. Um, I actually, in this case, I wrote a list at the beginning of characters that are in the in the book. Don't need to do that. Um, this is how I do all my scripts. Page one, full caps, double space, panel one. I give a description of the panel. My panel descriptions tend to be a little spare. Um, I, I, I kind of see my job as being the, the screenwriter for the director. The artist is the director. So I don't want to hamstring him by... by I think visually when I'm writing scripts, and occasionally I'll be very specific about stage direction, but more often than not, I trust the artist, uh, particularly when it's a creator-owned book where we're collaborating fully. Uh, I trust him to make decisions that will fit his aesthetic and make uh, his or her job uh, expand what they do. You know, they're basically, as I said, the director. You know, they're the ones choosing the scenes and what have you. So sometimes, a lot of the time, I'll write a character's emotion rather than a character's specific uh, actions in a panel. And then I'll let the artist decide for themselves how that character might uh, visually express the emotions, right? So as you see, it's very simple. Page one, double space, panel one. Description here, we see a shot of eight, yes, eight Mercury astronauts framed sitting on a mantle. Probably we can see some kind of military recommendation. So as you can see, it's sort of general. This is probably what we want to see, but, you know, spice it up as much as you want to, Shane. Then I double space again, panel two. Now we see a man bent over peering into a refrigerator. I tend to capitalize a character when they appear for the first time. So this is Jesse Wolf. Then single space, Jesse in caps. My characters, which, which indicates who's speaking, is always in caps. And then I tab over. I try to keep all the dialogue tabs lined up. Um, 
just because it looks prettier and it's easier to read. Well, shit, he says. Some people write their dialogue in all caps because very often comics are lettered in all caps. I like comics that are lettered in all caps, but I don't like scripting in all caps because when I'm reading the script, in my head it sounds like the character is screaming at me. So I try to write um, as uh, you know, as if it was a novel, um, as I would hear them conversationally in my head. So it's com well, comma shit. Uh, then double space again. The next panel, another line of dialogue. Um, then you'll see panel four. He cracks the beer open. Well, this this is a book that's set in 1963. So what I've done is I've inserted I've inserted a hyperlink um, to the specific can design that I think he would have used in 1963 with the beer that he pulls out of his refrigerator. Uh, this is the first time we've seen this setting, so I give some kind of loose descriptions uh, to give Shane an idea of what I think it would look like. Um, Shane is an artist who does lots of research and um, does draw drawings, architectural drawings, basically, of the settings and, and the, the buildings and the interiors that we're going to be in. So, and, and he also has, he, he's a graphic designer as well as an artist, and he has a very deep knowledge of, of uh, architecture and design. So I know what I need to kind of indicate to Shane for him to be able to run with the ball and create something that both of us will be happy with. So, so I give him that information. And as you can see, it's, it's how I do it on every page. Um, when I'm done with the page, I will insert a page break. I want to start every page at the top of a new page. Even if there's just one description on a page, I still want to start my next page, you know, page three, page four, on a brand new page. Um, it may waste ink, but I also think if an artist prints out the script, then he has each page on separate paper that he can doodle on or, you know, organize however he wants to. So page two is a little shorter, but then we, again, we... Um, we insert a page break, page three, a little longer. You'll see here in panel two, I don't give a description. Panel three, I don't give a description. By this point, Shane has a, you know, a solid idea about the tone and the attitude of the characters and everything. So at this point, I feel completely comfortable letting Shane decide how he wants to stage the scene and, and how he wants the characters to move. Um, so it goes on like that, as you can see all the way through. Uh, if you want to take a sneak peek of how Shane illustrate, illustrated the script, um, we are sharing pages in Google Drive here. And so this particular page is going to load. There it is. So as you see, I gave him a brief description, the first panel, eight Mercury astronauts. Shane added, you know, there's a stain on the wall. And, of course, the color uh, Shane's handling all the artwork on this, and um, this isn't as high. This isn't. This will look better in print. The, the resolution there it is. It cleared up a little bit, but so he made a lot of decisions here as to what would uh, inform us about this character. So the dialogue isn't laid into this page yet, but just from the way I've described the character and the way Shane has chosen to illustrate not just the character, but the setting in which the character, you know, the environment in which the character inhabits, we know a lot about this guy right off the bat. One page, the information is visual, it's communicated clearly. At this point, the dialogue just accentuates what we've already determined about the character based on script and artwork. Um, so that, very simply, that's how I do it. Um, some people, when they do scripts, they'll insert numbers for dialogue, like, for, the, for Jesse's first line, they'll have a one. For a second line, they'll have a two. That helps when an artist is laying out a page. If you've got multiple dialogue, uh, multiple characters speaking one panel, you might one, two, three to identify who speaks first, and then you can you know, lay in the dialogue. There are some editors who insist on having the dialogue numbered. Um, I don't do it innately. Um, I, I have gone in after the fact when an editor has asked me to and done that. I've had editors who will go through and number the dialogue all the way through as if that's part of their job. If if I'm working with an artist on a creator-owned book who explicitly requests that I do that, then absolutely I'll do that for him if it makes it easier for he or her. Um, but by and large, I find that this format is the easiest for me to work with. 
it flows more easily this way. I'm focused on description, dialogue, description, dialogue, um, action, dialogue. I'm not hung up on, you know, all these uh, different formatting cues and, and what have you. And also, I've always worked this way, or I have for a long time. So like anything else, it, it, it comes naturally to me. Um, I, I don't even think about it at this point. I will, I will go back occasionally. Sometimes I'll go back and I'll have extra information in here that I'll clean up, or I'll go back and make sure that everything is spaced out the way I want it to be just so it reads the same. But um, basically, this is it. This is my, my scripting format. This works creator-owned books, uh, licensed books, work-for-hire, what have you. Um, now, I will say, go to some scripts that have been... Now, this is a script that's been published. This is from Savage, which was a Valiant book. And you can see... Um, this kind of leads off with a description and some, the notes are in red from my editor. So my editor bracketed things. Now, when I rewrote this script, all I did was everything that was new from my original script, I, I did in red so that the, the, the changes that he had requested, he could see, um, he, he could specifically go to the red segments and see how that read <clears throat> the stuff that I didn't change. I kept in black. Uh, because he was happy with it, I was happy with it, so there's no reason for us to, to deal with it. So, you know, on his second or third read-through, if he's already happy with this, he'll go through. Then he can see the red section. Uh, as you can see, this was heavily rewritten, um, but that's fine. That happens. And then he can go through again and, and read all the red stuff. And, you know, yeah, this sounds good. This sounds good. Um, this actually, I noticed, doesn't have the page breaks in it like I, I just described. And I'm not sure if that's because I uploaded it here or if I had just written it that way, addressing specifically the changes. Um, anyway. And then a third format that I've never really worked much with is, uh, this is a script I did for an editor at Marvel. This is done in uh, markup in Word, which is not difficult to use, but um, it's he's an editor who requested that I, that I use this particular uh, version of Word. Uh, and as you can see, it, it again, it's it's something that you'll have to get used to. If somebody requests that you do that intuitively, um, you know, I think if you work with it a little bit, you can figure it out pretty easily. Um, Word makes things pretty easy to to figure. It looks confusing as hell <laughs> now that I'm looking at it right now. This was actually the first time I'd ever worked in markup, so I think I did a little too much work or more work than I needed to. Um, but the next time I did, I realized that just kind of going in and plunging ahead and figuring things out on my own was all I really needed to do to get things sorted. So, um, but no, I normally, I, I would prefer not to use this just because at a certain point, uh, all of this gets confusing to me and I feel like I've kind of lost the, the consistent thread. Um, I'm not, I don't think on a hundred different levels as I'm working. So, so anyway, that's that's basically it. Uh, hopefully, this is informational, uh, informative. Hopefully, it gives you, it, you know, if you've been stalled out trying to figure out exactly how you want to write a script, hopefully you can take this and just just jump into it. Um, th th this is not how you have to do it. People do it different ways. People indent different ways. Uh, guys that come in from other uh, other mediums often replicate the medium they're most comfortable with in their comic scripts. And you have to give a lot of credit to editors for being able to take all these different formats and, and, and formatting choices and, and figure out how to work with them all with each individual uh, writer. But I've never had a, 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 an editor anywhere ask me to completely change the way I do things. So, um, and, and for the most part, most artists I've worked with have responded positively the way I do this. So, so there you go. Hopefully that informs you a little bit as to how formatting works. And again, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to pass them along. I'll definitely get more into detail about the choices I make and, and how I approach scripts when it comes to descriptions and dialogue and things like that as we go. But for now, hopefully you've learned something. And as always, if you like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. If you don't, don't. And feel free to pass the word along to anyone else who you think might be interested. Thanks, guys.